Look at you listening to a random guy on YouTube instead of actually doing work. That's the reason you're not a 10x developer. But wait, 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 wait. Come back, don't leave. I actually have important stuff to say. It's not just that. It's not just lock in harder. So why are some people like vibe coding and just like have no hard skills and some people are 10x developers and capable of building insane things? And you kind of put in, I don't know, it might feel like a similar amount of time and effort, but other people are just way ahead of you. Why does that happen? Well, it's all deliberate practice. That's what it comes down to. If you've never heard that term, it basically just means pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. And it's it, it means like the harder something is for you to do, the more unfamiliar it is, the more you're going to learn. Think about the first time you ever encountered programming. Probably there were a lot of things you were confused about, like passing arguments to functions and stuff you take for granted now. But back then, like you learned a lot in those first couple exposures. And it's because you were exposed to something completely new. That's what's getting people ahead the fastest, is exposing themselves to as much of a new experience as possible. Now, the problem with vibe coding, and actually not just vibe coding, it's also to a lesser degree like just copying answers from Stack Overflow. That was the older version of vibe coding. Vibe coding is just a little bit more efficient form of that, but I think they're kind of the same. The problem with that is you encounter a problem and maybe a bug or you, you want to implement a feature you're not sure how, so you go to AI. Instead of you diving into a new experience and getting it, it, like really pushing through that discomfort of feeling like an idiot and knowing nothing, you're just kind of solving the problem as quickly as possible by either going through forum links rapidly, W3Schools doesn't have it, fuck them, I'm going to Stack Overflow, fuck them, uh, uh, Stack Exchange, fuck them, you know, you land on whatever the fuck random uh, dev.to article or some shit. Uh, and then you finally get some answer and it kind of solves your problem. The thing is, it's insidious because you can do that for a long time and you can vibe code for a long time and you will get better because you're just doing it all day. You get a little bit of experience and that does make you better over time because you do it so many times, you copy so many answers, you slowly start to realize things. Same thing with vibe coding. Uh, you st you'll learn, you'll learn. You'll just not learn all that quickly. The better thing to do in a scenario where you don't know how to implement a feature or maybe you don't, you, there's a bug, right? Is to do the very painful, painful thing and try to like understand the entirety of the bug and the root cause. And the reason it's painful is it often involves like actually reading documentation and putting aside that I want this fixed, I want my product working again, I want it back and saying, all right, maybe it won't work for a few days, you know, but I'm gonna fucking read the entirety of the React docs and figure out why I'm running into so many bugs. And the people that can put aside their, their uh, discomfort of feeling like an absolute noob and being constantly confused, those are the people that go the farthest. Because when you're reading the docs, like it's not, it's not just that it's like, oh, I don't wanna read, it's tedious. It's like reading technical documentation is really tough because you have to kind of it's like a math problem where you kind of have to puzzle through it. You know, you're like, oh, okay, this structure is passed to this function in this order and that's how they've set up their library. It's like, you've got to really think about these things. So it's, it's, it's painful to push through. But the good news is it's very distinctly painful. And the reason that's good news is because it's easy to recognize what will make you better. To be the most cracked programmer, all you have to do, it comes down to a very simple thing, is figure out exactly what you don't wanna do and do that. You know deep down what you have to do and you don't wanna do it, so that's why you're going to AI and you're going to forum answers. It's, it's like, it's tough, it's a hard thing to overcome and I still, I'm not even doing it. It's crazy, I'm like talking to you like I'm like totally a 10X engineer. Like I still go to AI and, and that kind of thing constantly and forums. But at least I know now, when there's inconvenience, when I feel like an absolute idiot, an absolute noob, when I feel like I'm out of my depth, that's where the most learning is happening. And it's just, it's absolutely extreme, the difference you'll get over just, I don't know, even a, a few weeks of like trying to solve your problems by vibe coding and going to forums versus like trying to fully understand why they're problems. And yeah, I guess back to the, it's, it's really hard to do that, to force yourself to do the hard things, but at least they're easy to recognize because you'll know immediately, oh fuck, this feels horrible. I hate reading docs, I'm so confused. Like nothing makes sense. That feeling, stay there as long as possible. It's intense to be there. But if you stay in that zone, that's where like, that's, that's how the, the really knowledgeable people are born. And yeah, I kind of, 
it's it's a mindset you kind of constantly have to be in because you're always looking for the passive path of least resistance, which is just natural. I mean, we're developers, we try to be efficient about things. And yeah, maybe that's doing procrastinating, like changing up your configuration. You know, if you watch this channel or speaking to someone who's less of a workflow weirdo, maybe it's just trying to work around in some other way. Like maybe you're yeah, I guess using AI or trying to find like a library to, to, to just make things more convenient. Try to just find the most difficult path and force yourself down it. And you'll, you'll learn a ton more doing that. I guess to think of an example in recent memory, uh, my friend and I, right, are building an audio visualizer in C++. And to do that, you need to listen to an audio stream with is like just the streaming information about like the levels of the audio, you know, and in C++, it's kind of annoying to get that. There's a couple of, well, it's so low level. You have to interact with individual operating systems, like audio server, like in Mac OS, it's core audio. And then there's like Alsa and um, uh, Jack, and there's the windows WSI API or whatever. There's different like audio APIs, you know, you have to implement your own custom thing for each. And, we went with a wrapper library called RT Audio. There's other ones like Core Audio, or not, uh, Port Audio and Juice that kind of just take care of cross-platform C++ audio handling. And it took us, honestly, such an embarrassingly long time to figure out how to compile these into our OpenGL project because CMake and like build systems for C++ are such a, they're such a disaster compared to like, Rust or Python, where you just now UV add, cargo add, boom, like your dependency is installed, everything's block file, it's perfect for you. This is like you gotta pass fucking three million compile flags, like the linking is all messed up, there's duplicate artifacts in all these different things, like one small mistake and it doesn't work. CMake syntax is so arcane, it's like a 300 line long file for five dependencies, and yeah, it's really, it's tough. But I learned so much just thinking, all right, well, what if I just force myself to, I'm just gonna complete this, it'll be brutal. And it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a hard thing at all. It was literally add this one library, this one C++ library to buy CMakeList, adding one C++ dependency, how bad can it be? You gotta set aside like, oh, that's, that's so trivial. Yeah, and, and, and like think deep down, oh, fuck, I don't actually really know how to do that and just force yourself to do it because as much as it seems like above you or as much as it seems like uh, you don't need to do it or I, I want the product, I wanna skip over that. I understand build systems, I feel like quite a lot better than I did before. Still fucking confused by CMake, that shit is horrible. But at least I understand the compilation process and tools like AutoMake and configuration scripts and just those C tools better than I did before. That's where the learning comes in, it's where you're like, you, you go to a repository and you're not in the mindset, how do I get the bare minimum um, amount of effort and just pull the exactly the part of this library I need and ignore everything? Think about like, wow, there's like 10 different files with extensions I've never seen. What the fuck is this libutils folder, you know? And just like look into all of it that you see. And the more, the more you feel like, ooh, that would be a lot of effort. Oh, I don't wanna do that go that direction. That'll make you a 10x engineer. Uh, yeah, that's, that's the one thing I've found. I have another video on ego. I think that's big as well and tied to a lot of this stuff. But yeah, it's really deliberate practice. It's doing what you don't want to do. And another great thing is effort here and time. It's not about how much time you put in. Like someone doing that I would say for 20 minutes, someone like reading CMake documentation for 20 minutes is like the equivalent of 10 hours of vibe coding. And if they can do three hours of that a day, just they're blowing you out of the water in terms of how fast they're progressing. And yeah, it's and they can do all these other things with their time now too, because they've deliberately practiced. And it's a, it's a really tough feeling to see people advance faster than you because of this trick, because it feels like such black magic. Like how does that, is that guy just way smarter than me? No. People are not all that much smarter than you. We're all, I think, a lot closer in intelligence than we'd like to admit. It's that they've found this one little weird trick, which is just be uncomfortable, do the uncomfortable stuff, and you'll get ahead. Uh, so yeah, that's 
That's what I've been finding, but I want to hear from you too because this audience is smart. Probably other people have stuff to add, and I'll catch you next time.